Hello and welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe. Here with me is my co-host Stan. Hello and greetings. And today we'll be discussing Christopher Tolkien and his massive contributions to not just Middle Earth, but fantasy fiction overall. Now, in 1977, he published The Silmarillion, having spent the years after his father's death going through all the stories of Middle Earth that happened in the first and even some of them from the second age, like the Akalabeth, and putting them together. In 1980, he published The Unfinished Tales. 1981, the letters of his father, with, of course, the help of Humphrey Carter, who's just such an invaluable resource for anyone who wants to know about J.R.R. Tolkien. And in 2007, he published The Children of Hurin, having put it together into a full-length novel, which is one of the best reads in fantasy history. 2017 saw the publication of Baron and Luthien, and 2018 saw the publication of The Fall of Gondolin. I just go over all of this to give you an idea of all the massive work Christopher put into his father's mythos. Also ended up publishing over the course of several years in between the publication of his father's letters and the children of Hurin, a lot of his father's drafts, which are contained in the history of Middle Earth, which is a monumental piece of work. He's also published a lot of his father's essays in there, mostly in the Morgoth's Ring. And now they've been published also in The Nature of Middle Earth, which is an invaluable resource for understanding what Tolkien was thinking with his world. Now, sadly, Christopher died just a few years ago, which was a blow to the entire fantasy community and all Tolkien fans. And the thing is, Christopher was there since almost the beginning, proofreading, Christopher was probably history's greatest editor, or at least he was the greatest fantasy editor, as he put more years of his life into this genre than many of us have even been alive for. Because when you consider the amount of editing he put in, the amount of detail, the amount of thought he put into each piece of work, in the history of Middle-earth, he also included essays of his own on each draft individually. He also included his own essays and thoughts on each of his father's books, such as Children of Hurin. And the thing is, he explains his logic with the compilation. A lot of the decisions vis-a-vis each chapter, well, he puts it at the beginning, I think, of the book and at the end, and each version of the story that he puts into these books. And the amount of work gone in is just monumental. And it shows a passion and a love for Middle-earth that is rarely rivaled by any author or editor for a fantasy world. I can't help but think of how a lot of fantasy authors today want to speed right through a lot of the work without putting in the thought or the effort that Christopher did. Christopher truly should be considered on par in terms of importance for fantasy literature as Howard and his father Tolkien. Yeah, a lot of people take Christopher for granted. If it wasn't for Christopher helping organize the entirety of his father's world, we wouldn't have books like Lord of the Rings, Silmarillion. In a lot of ways, he played just as important a role in the production of Lord of the Rings as, well, J.R.R. Tolkien. Lord of the Rings, I don't know in what context or what it would be like without Christopher. Doubtlessly, it wouldn't be as good because Christopher had a lot of influence over his father's decisions and especially creative ones, because he was the one listening to it, proofreading it, sending his father back to his desk to retype the entire chapter because Christopher's yay or nay could make or break Tolkien's decision on keeping a chapter. The influence Christopher wielded over his father is incredible. And it's something interesting that reading up about their relationship, they were obviously best friends. They were not just father and son, but best friends. J.R.R. Tolkien was Christopher's hero. But in turn, you could tell from his letters that John Ronald Rule Tolkien worshipped the ground his son walked on. Christopher was his favorite. He obviously favored Christopher because Christopher was the genius in the family out of his sons. Honestly, if I had a son like Christopher, I'd favor him over any other child I have, too. And you look at the amount of work he put in, even into the lore. He obviously wanted everything lined up perfectly. He didn't want anything contradicting the lore of his dad or 
anything. He could have changed details in the Silmarillion and whatnot all he wanted, but I don't think he did. He published everything just as it was. Sure, he connected some of the dots together in order to form the Silmarillion, where his dad was very puzzled by which draft to use in some cases and, you know, how to connect the drafts. That was the main thing that troubled Tolkien, and he left it to his son. Now, I think Christopher only made one mistake in the publication of the Silmarillion. He really should have included Dagger Daggeroth the end of the world of Middle Earth. But even though I disagree with that decision, I admire Christopher. The heart and dedication it took for such a man to complete his father's dream is incredible. Yeah. I can't think of another son who was that dedicated to his father. His father. It's incredible. I agree. And Christopher wanted to also, even on his deathbed almost, he worked on the fall of Gondolin and he got it out just to say in time. And he wanted to help out with, I think, nature of Middle Earth or so it seems from that author who put it together. Well, I say author, actually editor. If every fantasy universe had an editor or author as dedicated as Christopher, honestly, the fantasy genre would be the finest genre in the world. And no one would want to write in any other genre because... It would just be the creme de la creme, and everyone would be rushing over to mm -hmm. the genre. But sadly, not every author puts the same dedication and love that the Tolkien's did into Middle Earth. Now, I think we've, what's the term one person once used? Simped for Christopher enough. I've been accused of doing that in a J.R.R. Tolkien Discord chat. And who can blame you? Dude was awesome. But anyways, if you like this video and are a fan of Christopher's work, do feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And tell us what your favorite piece of Tolkien's literature is. For me, it's the Silmarillion. I'd be curious to see what you guys think. Because honestly, I think one of the best ways of commemorating this great man is to read his father's work that he so lovingly dedicated his life to.